right you guys got another video here for you in this one we're going to be taking a look at memtest 86 and how you can test your memory on your computer now there's been a bit of a debate going about on how long you run memtest 86 for and also uh, how to go about uh, testing your memory and i thought i'd cover this in this video here now this is not memtest 86 plus this is memtest 86 uh, this is made by Passmark, and uh, basically this is a more up-to-date version of uh, Memtest. Now, if you take a look at the website here, which I'll quickly show you. So as you can see here, this is Memtest 86 Plus, and this is an old school type memory testing uh, software. And you can see the date it was last updated, which was 2013. Well, we have now moved into the DDR4 generation uh, memory and stuff like that. And maybe, uh, just maybe that when you're having such old software, it might not be uh, testing your memory uh, correctly. So I would much prefer to use uh, more updated software. And this is where uh, Memtest 86 comes into play. So if you look at Memtest, um, just Memtest 86 here, the last update on this one was February uh, 2018 so you can see here that it's been kept updated on a regular basis now what you're looking at here on the screen is the boot up of memtest 86 and we're going to go through and show you some of the stuff that you need to uh, do so let me just quickly show you uh, on the memtest 86 so you can see here we've got number one which is version 4.3 default you can enable that and go straight into there now normally uh, when you boot up to this uh, actual uh, device whether it be usb or cd it will automatically choose the default uh, straight off the bat so you don't have to select it but if you move any keys like the cursor keys it will stop that so you can read it a little bit more uh, thoroughly so if you do want to select just move your keys so i'm just going to select one here and go into the default and push enter and this is what you're going to see memtest 86 version 4 0.3.7 and it's now scanning uh, the memory okay now this is a virtual machine so you may see a slight difference here if you're scanning your uh, machine here but basically it's going to be the same sort of thing so what you're looking for is you can see here we've got the test uh, lined up here so you can see the pass up the top which is your pass area so this is going through eight percent nine percent and it's also testing you can see each time it's doing this it will run through a certain cycle of tests uh, and it will go through the pass rate of that now also down here you can see the patterns it's using you can see the different types of patterns that it's using to test your memory now moving on down here you can see another test area here where it says moving uh, inner versions random patterns and stuff like that so this is what it's doing here now it's doing a block move and this will continually change occasion it may do you know seven or ten different types of uh, different changes of patterns uh, that it's testing your memory with so looking down here uh, this is where your errors will be listed if there are errors on here okay now there is some sort of confusion on how many uh, passes you're supposed to be doing now passes are what you're looking at here you can see passes are zero so that means we've done uh, no passes on this memory you may be seeing pass up here but this doesn't mean you've done one complete pass of all the tests that it's running on this system now if you only do one pass it might miss uh, some um, sort of intermittent errors on the memory so let me show you the motherboard here with the memory module in there and I'll explain it a bit more. But you want to try and do at least four passes. Uh, that way you can be sure that the memory module is OK. Uh, a good six or seven would be better. OK, so here we have a motherboard here and uh, this is a DDR3 memory. Now, the good thing about Memtest 86, which is the uh, more modern type updated uh, ram testing uh, software it supports ddr4 ddr3 ddr2 and so on okay so it doesn't really matter what generation of memory you've got because it's fully updated and uh, as you can see here uh, the speed that it's going to take to uh, read this memory and test it 
will be determined on how fast and how good your processing power is as well. Okay, so that's gonna take into account uh, how long it takes. Now also what you're trying to do here is trying to find out what memory module is bad, if any, and also whether it's the actual bank that you slot it into, okay? So you can see this board has four slots and it also has uh, one memory uh, module in there and that's how you wanna scan it, okay? So another thing here is to uh, look at is what about if I did one pass on here? Well, if you do one pass, there's a potential risk of you thinking the memory is okay when there is actually errors on there. It hasn't done enough testing and it think you think the memory is okay and you go ahead and give it back to the customer. And of course, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start crashing, blue screening and uh, freezing up and you're gonna have problems again. So it's always best to let the test run right through. Don't be tempted to stop it early. Let it run right through, do a minimum of four passes on there and you should be okay. Uh, once you know the memory module is okay, you remove it and then put another one in there, okay? There's no quick shortcut for this. You're gonna have to let it run and test it. Now, if you've got two memory modules, uh, you know, you can expect to spend a good few hours uh, testing those and a good day, I would have thought, to test those two memory modules uh, for a good uh, four pass pattern on each one of those, okay? Now, there's up to 13 algorithms that it will run test patterns on and to get a possible uh, test on those, you wanna make sure that you're running as many as possible and it will possibly find errors on there. Now, obviously you may be lucky and you may plug in your memory module and it may detect errors straight away. And if that is the case, then you can pull out the memory module and replace it, okay? Because that means it's bad. Now, if you've tested all your memory, and uh, it's uh, tested good and you've done four passes on each then it may be the actual memory uh, slot that you're slotting the memory into and this is another common area you can take out the memory and uh, clean the slot itself uh, with some isopropanol or get rid of the dust in there also clean the uh, gold connectors on the ram to make sure they're nice and clean and there's no gank on there and uh, plug it back in and it should be okay now obviously if it isn't then it's obviously another error with something else and you need to then diagnose that problem but your memory is then tested and you know the memory is then good okay now normally the quickest way to test memory is not by using software it's by uh, using a uh, good known memory which you can uh, easily have around your workshop now if you're not a PC repair tech then obviously you may not have memory lying around but if you've got a good stick of memory or two good sticks of memory then what you can do is take the old ones out and put the good ones in and then obviously run some benchmarks uh, on there and also do some uh, hardcore stuff which will tax the system a bit and use a lot of memory and normally this will uh, uh, kick up an error if it kicks up an error then it's not a memory issue it's normally uh, generated by something else and it's a quick way of diagnosing uh, whether memory is an issue or not so rather than go through the process of uh, running many hours of scans with software it's quite easy to swap out memory uh, one stick at a time with good memory until you find the bad one or bad sticks of memory and you could just replace those uh, anyway I think that's going to be about it for this video. If you're interested in this uh, software, it's called Memtest86, and I'll leave the link in the video description for you. It's a free piece of software you can use. You can see it's uh, compatible with all memories. Anyway, my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this one helps you out. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank <laughs> you.